exciting challenge of remaining unleavened and not being like the ancient Israelites who, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, God was very displeased with many of them for they were overthrown in the wilderness. They began to look to their own ways. In fact, they wanted to look back to the false gods of Egypt and not to the true God. So once we've prepared for Passover and unleavened bread, and now we have completed the seven days of unleavened bread, do we now put them behind us and don't need to remember them until next year? Well, of course not. So instead of forgetting the point of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we must take the meaning of being unleavened with us to use it as a foundation on which we can build our lives throughout the year. We must continue to work hard to remain unleavened spiritually all year long. So brethren, it's time to keep our heart pure and clean. Sadly, even the Israelites carried forth some of Egypt with them and they looked back at Egypt. We know from Numbers 11 verse 5 that they said, we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic, and no doubt the false gods that went along with it as well. So we need to be mindful that we're not caught up with this world, that that becomes such an overpowering thing. What is it in this world that captures your attention more than God and his way of life? And we need to continue to remain unleavened. And we have the wonderful reassuring words in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that's a wonderful reassurance, isn't it, that we have, brethren, as we continue on through this year in overcoming and in developing the very mind of God. So in conclusion, what is our task?